So, for those of you who are far too shy to ask questions in person, I've taken the risk of putting out a Twitter, Twitter fall thing. So the reason for this is actually to ask questions, not to bitch me off. Because I'll get Phil to punch you. Phil, stand up. Where's Phil? He's very big and he punches pretty hard. So just this is to ask questions, you know, if you're too embarrassed to, to get up and ask them in person. So um, let's go to... Let's kick this off. I think, um, firstly, I want to say welcome because I know you fought the rain. Aren't you all warriors? Who got wet? One person got wet. <laughs> You're not that warriors. So who's who's been here for the first time? I put your hand up if you're here for the first time. Not bad. Ten. Welcome, welcome, Funying. Um, we also have some visitors. We have. I'm honoured. Does anybody know Hip Hong Kong? This lady here, Lisa. Hiphongkong.com. You want to know what's going on in Hong Kong? Absolutely everything under the sun, including as I just found out. Uh, what's it called? A, a man Brazilian? Oh, Manzillion? We're having a contest for single in the city. It's a writing contest. So you and get, you get. If you're a man and you win, you, you could actually potentially win a, a Brazilian wax for yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One of the prizes is a boyzillion, so if your wish is a little out of control, you can write something for our uh, contest. <laughs> it's, a, it's a blog that we run called Single in the City. It's actually one of the most popular blogs on, on hiphongkong.com. So if you haven't logged on, check it out. So who's, who's Bush is to... No, I don't know. Sorry. That's for another time. Another time. But I'm not going to turn on Twitter now because somebody's going to say I'm being rude. <laughs> just turn it on and see if somebody's brave enough to say I'm being rude. Right, cool. So, um, who came because they got an email? Oh, no, none of you came because you got an email. I thought so. Email is dying, possibly. Who came because of Facebook? Oh, not bad. Not bad. Who came, so you're part of the 500 million people, well done, congratulations. Who came because of Twitter? Uh, four of you, that's uh, normal. Who came because, because a mate said, you've got to come to this event, it's absolutely brilliant, and you're going to meet Lisa, and you might win a boyzillion. <laughs> Three of you, yeah. Great. So, uh, this is about mobile today. So how many of you here buy or sell mobile advertising? Apart from our guest. I can't really see this light so bright. I don't think we do this. The people that buy mobile, raise your hand higher. Yeah. <laughs> if you work for Coca-Cola and you buy advertising, put your hand up now. And how many of you make apps for mobile? There you go. Secondary market. Secondary market. So uh, tonight is quite a big night for me because we've just started, or we're going to start, uh, Dubai. Web Wednesday in Dubai is starting next week by some very entre entrepreneurial uh, Indian fellows. Uh, and if you want to go and find out about what's happening in the Middle East, go to webwednesday.me, which stands for Middle East, not me. Um, soon. So, first event is next Wednesday, August the 4th. They're going to have an event in Dubai. So, it's pretty groovy. That means we now have events in Bangkok. There's one in Bangkok tonight which is, how do I get fans? Quality or quantity? There's uh, one coming up in Beijing, there's one in Guangzhou, Singapore, and there's a couple of pirates out there who are stealing my name. But anyway, so Dubai. Okay, I've got some rules. Uh, I've got to make some rules. I'm called Napoleon, and I've got a little bit of a complex, so some rules. Uh, I'm going to interview uh, Christian here for about half an hour. If you could be nice and quiet, if you don't want to be nice and quiet, there's a room where you might find some guys who've already had boys aliens. <laughs> it's got poles and horses, rather well endowed. And go in there and uh, hang out and chat. Uh, if you want to come back and chat later, please, please do. Um, we're giving 10% of the money that you guys paid to charity to help, ironically, the floods in China. So Oxfam is taking that. 
And I want to do a bit of a shout out. We've got a guy who's just arrived from London, Marcus, Marcus de la Mar. Put your hand up. If you're looking for a guy who knows about, who's worked for the government and IT and new in Hong Kong, quite charming, talk to Marcus de la Mar. Right? We also have a guy from Macau who runs a Macau's Only Gentleman Club. Stephen Anderson, are you here? He could get you. You could do a business together, boys, zillions. We know him. There you go. There's an underworld. So he, 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 he spammed my Facebook page. So I said, Oi, mate, that's not the way to do it. Come to the event and I'll tell people about you. So he's lost his opportunity. Uh, Turner, is Chris Dwyer here from CNN? Who likes CNN? Who watches CNN? I won't tell you. It's the only non-partisan place you can get news. Who watches Al Jazeera? There you go. Al Jazeera. Um, they have a quiz night on August the 5th at Grappers. So if you want to meet some kind of CNN-ish type news people, go along. Also, uh, Casey here is going to tell us. Casey Lau. Who knows Casey Lau? Sorry, who doesn't know Casey Lau? <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's my browser? Here we go. Casey is quite an entrepreneurial character. Thank you. He's good at comics. He started off making toys in the dot-com days when we were all looking at virtual. He went plastic. And um, Casey runs a thing in Hong Kong called iFanatics, which is a club for iPhone fanatics, obviously, an iPad and any other eye that comes out. And he's also getting involved in this thing called the uh, Startup Saturdays. So if you've got nothing to do on the 7th of August, <laughs> and you've had your boy Zillion, that's going to have it all week. Have it there. Have it there. <laughs> Whilst you're on your laptop. Whilst you're on Twitter, you can have a boy Zillion. So uh, really good quality um, startups, well, apart from Microsoft, are coming to talk at this event. So do go to this website, startupshk.com. Do you want to say a few words? Sure. Um, hi, I'm Casey. So on next Saturday, we're having the Startup Saturday, which has invited everybody who's in a startup, entrepreneur, tech enthusiast, media, anybody who's interested in startups. We'd love you to come out. What's going to happen is uh, we're going to have a bunch of panels with some of the big startups in Hong Kong, like Alive Not Dead, uh, Desiree, uh, Pixel Media, things like this, as well as 18 uh, startups will be uh, showcasing for the first time in a public audience. Um, guys, come up here. Uh, these are my co-founders here. So um, if you are, uh, yeah, they all be boy, boy, uh, boy zillions, so we'll, uh, not that I know, but I'm, I hear. Um, if anybody wants to talk about more about the uh, Startup Saturday, please talk to one of us. And we're also setting up um, a thing called Boot HK, which is a going to be a like a startup uh, place for people to hang out. I'm going to pass it to Jonathan quickly. Yeah. Uh, so Boot is, is actually so it's a community, but it's a community with spaces for people to come and work. So it's it's not just startups uh, like what we're talking about so far, but also media people, whatever. If you need a space, a hot desk, things like that. That's what we're setting up. So go to Boot.hk if you're interested. Boot, boot as in the shoe. So if you're like somebody from overseas, you want to hang out, meet some startups, meet some entrepreneurs, meet digital people, that's what this is going to be about. Um, and then Startup Saturday on, on next Saturday at Cyberport. It's from 10 to 7. Microsoft is sponsor. Cyberport's a sponsor. It'd be, I think it'd be pretty good. So if you're into, if you're here tonight, you'll probably be interested to see what's going on there. So head over to the site and sign up there. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, guys. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and the last, oh, uh, K, K, the Asia Digital Marketing Association. K is coming, looking hot, wearing red. Where's K? K. I'm too short. You're too short. Come to the front. Tell us about your yearbook. Hello. Who is not a member of the Asia Digital Marketing Association? Rubbish. Oh. Rubbish. The um, Asia Digital Marketing Association is one of the sponsors for Web Wednesday around the region. We're the industry support body for that. Uh, we support Beijing, Guangzhou, Hong Kong, Singapore, and soon to be in Vietnam as well. 
Uh, we are a not-for-profit membership-based association trying to educate marketers about using more digital in their marketing mix because once they start doing that, that grows the pie for our members who are largely service providers. Um, there are quite a few of our members here and also many of our friends. Um, I've known Christian since his Microsoft days when he was very big support for us in Singapore. Um, Napoleon as well. So, but what we do every year is a digital marketing yearbook. And I have one here. It is um, full of statistics and case studies country by country for Asia Pacific broken down into channels. So it gives you a really good overview of what's going on in each market in Asia. So you can download it from our website, asiadigitalmarketingyearbook.com, which is a mouthful but states what it does and what it is. Um, so I encourage you to go and do that. There's a couple of things on there that you need to do and that's really just to tell us what country you're from, what industry you're in and the role that you're in in that industry um, as part of the registration process. We don't ask for anything else. If you don't tick the box to receive any information from us, we don't contact you again. So um, it's, we're very aware of people's privacy and that concern. So if you want to have a look at the yearbook, I've got some with me, but the hard copy is only available to our members. Um, the soft copy is what's available to non-members. So enjoy. Excellent. So I'm going to keep this one. Is that right? Um, I'm a member. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to give you a sample, a sample of, of something. Uh, in 2010, Valentine's Day and Chinese New Year, New Year both fell on the 14th of February, perhaps most prompting Hong Kongers to send more than 28 million SMS messages and receive 36. Pretty cool. Million. All right, so let's, um, last thing, you buy, I buy. Hong Kong's hottest data. Uh, has anybody uh, subscribed to you buy, I buy? It's like, has anybody heard of Group On? It's the Hong Kong version of Group On. So, uh, Danny, founder, Danny, where are you? Danny, quickly, Danny is providing tonight's prizes. He's gonna tell us, uh, Two sentences about uh, you buy I buy and the prices. Hi everyone, my name is Danny Young, uh, founder of You Buy I Buy here in Hong Kong. Uh, hopefully, everyone gets the chance to check it outside out. Um, but today, we're raffling off some few prizes from our daily deals. Basically, we're the group on the Hong Kong. Uh, in a matter of six weeks, we garnered over the 47,000 fans on Facebook already. And basically, 28,000 in Taiwan. Uh, we're launching Singapore next month. Um, ideally, we like to be in 10 to 15 states by the year's end. Uh, tonight we have some raffling off prizes. We're gonna have a $400 cash, vou cash voucher for Tony and Guy, uh, central location. We also have two tickets for AMC, uh, no restrictions, and also two tickets for uh, Yoshinoya people. All right, thank you, guys. All right, guys. So we got some some juicy prizes. I think Kay is gonna give a copy of this this thing as well, right, Kay? So uh, go and hang out. You buy, I buy. Okay, let's get down to our guest. This man, Christian and I went out last night. Um, I've seen him in action. He's a good salesman. Very good salesman. <laughs> so, here we go. A quick snap. All right, they're up there. So let's start with um, Chris. Can I call you Chris? Or is it Christian? Christian, please. Christian. So, what do you do for AdMob? What is your role at AdMob? So my role is basically two things. Is one is really evangelize mobile as an industry throughout the region. And it's actually interesting because what we've seen, especially in the last couple of months, is mobile, even though there's massive penetration across Asia and a lot of markets, mobile isn't the first screen. In terms of marketers and agencies, they're just not really aware of it or they're confused as how they can actually do mobile advertising. So one is to evangelize what the mobile opportunities are and how you reach these consumers. Um, the second thing is more pertaining to what I do or my company is actually seller offerings or ad mob offerings and how they can reach these consumers. This is how we help you reach these consumers via the video ad unit you mentioned in your email or it could be clicked on Facebook, it could be whatever ad unit. So one is evangelizing and two is once evangelize is done, is sell it in and specifically ad mob offerings. So um, you went from Microsoft to... Uh Google, was that a, trans a difficult transition? Well, Is the culture very different? Technically, I went from Microsoft to AdMob and then Google. So um, as 
in terms of, well, I think it makes a lot more sense to talk about the transition from Microsoft to AdMob. And it was different. And there's no question, Microsoft is an amazing company. It's a massive company. There's 90,000 employees. Where then I went to AdMob, where there's 160 employees. So there's this marked difference between the two companies. Um, now I'm back at the company at Google, where there's 20,000 employees. So to answer your question from Microsoft to AdMob, yes, I mean, it's a massive change in culture shift. Um, but going to Google, I think it's going to be, there's going to be some similarities to what Microsoft is, but there's going to be some things that aren't similar. I mean, I think. Google innovates really quick. Um, there's engineers, it's a culture of engineers, there's a whole bunch of other hosts of stuff that makes it different from Microsoft. Hey guys, at the back, um, Boyzillions, next door please. Can we just uh, quieten down, it's nice and polite. It's very nice of you to be nice and polite for a short while. So, um, do you think mobile advertising is, Asia is ready for mobile advertising? Yeah, well, without question, mobile advertising is ready at this moment. And, uh, how do I back that up? Well, we have brands from anywhere from Unilever advertising in Vietnam that's on mobile advertising. And frankly, Unilever tends to be a little bit more cautious, but we have them advertising on Vietnam. Or you have brands like in Hong Kong where we did something at Visa. So if you look across the, across the broad spectrum of advertisers and agencies, we see pretty much everyone tiptoeing or going full thrust into mobile. So yeah. You know, I know people have been saying it's the mobile year, the mobile year, the mobile, but this year is definitely it. So, so tell me, okay, in, in uh, Vietnam, how, what would they do? What does Unilever do? Do they send that SMS or is it a bit more sophisticated than that? They don't. It's a little bit more sophisticated than that. And they've actually backed away from using SMS as a broadcast vehicle. So what they did was their whole purpose was they wanted to pull people in. So they would advertise on our network. And once they pull people in, meaning when someone clicks on the ad, it would go to a mobile website that allows users to engage with the content there. So what is engagement? Well, you know, they had their TVCs on there. So they basically took their TVC that they already paid for and used mobile as another distribution vehicle for it. Um, they had a second thing, which was data collection. So they wanted to build a SMS and data repository for their clients and customers. So yeah, it's not SMS anymore. I mean, I think it's definitely moved away where there's a lot of cool advertising happening on mobile. So I, I don't perceive, I don't know anything about the mobile, I mean, how many people in Vietnam have, do you need a smartphone to, to do what you just talked about, or can you do it on a normal blue screen 2G phone? You don't, you don't. I mean, you look at a market like Vietnam, um, when we look at the top 10 handsets that access or sees or add, there's a couple of things that stands out that which is really interesting. The first thing is, most of the top 10 phones tend to be phones which are prepaid. Now, if you know the prepaid market, in general, when people buy prepaid phones, they tend to basically, it's a lot more cheaper and inexpensive phone. So it's like the social economic status, C or D, that are accessing these ads. The second thing is, of the top 10 phones, we see majority of the phones are actually two years or older. Now, if you think about that, this is 2010. 2008, iPhone was barely out. So to answer your question now, it could be anything from a smartphone like an iPhone or an Android phone to a phone, a simple Nokia phone that's just text and whatnot, that still sees her app. So you, you would serve, how does it work? You would serve a text ad? They browse a website and they see a text ad? Or how do you initiate the... Yeah, so it, it pivots. So if you have a smartphone that can handle a graphical image similar to how you advertise on Yahoo, you would serve that ad. Now, if you have a phone that's relatively inexpensive or frankly rudimentary, then we'd serve a text ad. So the technology allows you to do that. So, tell us about um, Hong Kong. I read that uh, Hong Kong has, we're the smartest people in Asia, apparently, in terms of smartphones. Which, <laughs> which I also read is that smartphones are making us stupid, so maybe we're the stupidest people. 48% penetration in Hong Kong is the figure I read. Now, uh, you get access to all kinds of data, so... Do you, is the advertising that happens in Hong Kong, is it mostly smartphone based? Because I don't see much SMS or MMS or even QR codes. You know, what, 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 what is happening in a place like Hong Kong? Well, I mean, two things with that. I mean, based on the advertiser advertising with us, most of it is advertising on mobile websites. Um, and the second thing is because the majority of our traffic on in Hong Kong is dominated by smartphones like iPhone and Android, you can pull up those two charts, right? Um, it tends to be smartphone skewed. So no, I couldn't really comment on what client's advertising strategy is pertaining towards SMS. Yeah, okay. 
I don't like to show slides, but he twisted my arm last night after a few drinks. So here's, there you go. Isn't that really exciting to look at? Infographic. Right there. Tell us what this means. So this slide effectively kind of summarizes the situation in Hong Kong, at least based on our data. And it's an amazing story. So let me kind of lay it out. You guys can see it across over there. So the first graph, or let me talk about the data set here. So the data here is actually page views that we generate on our network against Hong Kong eyeballs. So this is only people in Hong Kong, like everyone in here. So if you look in the first month, which is January, we generated in Hong Kong on a monthly basis about 55 million page views. I mean, that's a pretty astounding number. Sorry, that's, that's, a, that's a view of a page with one of your ads on it. It's, well, no, not quite. It's actually when one of our sites or application requests an ad. So, so it's, it's applications as well. It is, it is a combination of applications and sites. Now, if you look six months later, in Hong Kong, in the month of June, in one month, we did over 130 million page views. So in the span of six months, growth has grown about almost 200%. That's pretty phenomenal. So how much of this, can you disclose how much of this is pay, web pages as opposed to apps? Um, I can't, but I would say in general in Hong Kong, it does skew towards applications, which generates the bulk of the traffic. Let me add one more point to this, and I think this number is, is frankly astounding right now, but we think there's three big catalysts that's going to drive this number even further, not only for AdMob, but for the whole industry. So the first one is iPad. So iPad was released last week. This number does not include iPad, and we think it's going to be a huge driver of growth. The I'm second, sorry, quickly, who's got an iPad in here? I saw Casey's. Yeah. How many? I, I can't see you lot at the back. Hey, you lot at the back, anybody got an iPad? Best way to keep you quiet. Yeah, so we've got about four iPads. They're not officially available. Oh, they are, right? Last week. Yeah, yeah. Who's got an iPhone 4? Next week. No, I know, but you can buy them. All right, sorry. All right, let's carry on. That was interesting, what you were saying. So, yeah, well, you let it perfectly. The second catalyst is iPhone 4 this week, right? And I guess the question is, who's going to upgrade? If you raise your hands. You know, it's funny, because there's a whole bunch in the middle that don't do anything. So it's <laughs> We've got an interactive corner here, and a very interactive lot at the back, okay. So that's the second catalyst, and the third catalyst is Android. We think, um, irrespective of, of anything else, we think Android is going to be a big catalyst as well. So this number will get bigger, there's no question about it. Uh, we think it, we're, there's, we're pretty bullish in Hong Kong. So tell us what this means, and then I'm going to close your PowerPoint down. Fair enough. So this slide is actually pretty good data, and what it actually shows is the amount of unique iPhone, iPod, and iPad touch that we recognize in Hong Kong. And why it's interesting is because, frankly, you can't get this data anywhere else, so you probably have clients or people wondering, well, how many iPhone are there truly in Hong Kong? Well, you can emphatically say, at least based on AdMob data, in the month of June, there were 322,000 iPhones that we recorded. Now, we're not the universe, um, so you can probably gross this up to get an overall industry number, but you at the very least have this base so that you know, okay, I think everyone has an iPhone, um, but what number is it truly? Well, based on this, you know at least 322,000 people in Hong Kong have iPhones. Do you believe that? Casey, do you believe that? Sorry. Mr. iPhoneetics, is it true? 320,000 people in Hong Kong have iPhones. I heard more. At least. I heard more. You heard more. No, that's right. It's at least. This is only so, what we So how many? How many? Double, so you only have 50% of the market in Hong Kong. <laughs> that's that right? a fair assessment. I can no comment on that. Yeah, thanks, that helped. Cheers. Excellent. Getting ready to the PowerPoint. Um, let's see. So, I might take a quick question from Twitter form if there is one there. Uh, since when has Web Wednesday got anything to do with geeks? That's true. There's no geeky people in this room at all. No questions. All right, we'll move away from this. Come up with the questions and I'll look at them later. All right. So, um, do you think SMS is dying? Ha or has SMS died? As, 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 a, as a form of advertising? It's highly, well, in many cases, it's highly invasive. I, I was just talking to uh, you and the hot mob guy, right? And we were saying, basically, I remember when you arrived, you used to arrive in Shanghai and you'd get 20 MMS most of which are like, you know, <laughs> which means you want a girl. So, well, what happens? I remember a few years ago, there's a huge, everybody's excited about value-added services, and all these companies went public, LinkedIn, whatever, 
Uh, they all made lots of money. So where do you see the whole value-added service SMS world? Is that, is that falling by the wayside? So let me answer the first question. Um, I definitely don't think SMS has died as a advertising vehicle. Um, and what we're seeing is a lot of clients implement not only SMS, but which is to do their push initiatives like what we just described, or something a little bit not as um, interruptive as that. But then also do mobile ad web advertising, which is to help pull people in. So they do a combination of push and pull. Now, what we think five years or two years from now, we think mobile is going to follow the same trajectory as online. So if you remember five years, six years ago, online was all about pop-ups and relatively intrusive advertising. And I think now it's gotten where it's really good, where a lot of ads engage you and you don't feel, thank you for the water, um, feel so intrusive. And I think that's how mobile is going to follow on that trajectory as well. It's funny you said uh, invasive ads. I was in uh, Sydney at a Facebook presentation and the guy showed a new Facebook ad. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Instead of the little text ads, you mouse over it and it does something really wicked. You know what it does? A page takeover. So your whole page in Facebook becomes an ad. And then you can like it, forward it, whatever. And he thought it was revolutionary, but it was very funny to sit there and watch him talking about rich media ads and how Facebook was revolutionizing advertising. Going back to invasive ads. So anyway, moving on. So. Um, Data. We live in Hong Kong. Hong Kong has just elected. We're going through a scandal at the moment. Who in here gave away their data to the MTR? Willingly. <laughs> Who's been approached by an insurance firm asking you if you wanted to... So we've got a scandal here where the MTR has just sold a whole bunch of their data from the Octopus cards. So mobile is a very personal vehicle. What kind of data are you collecting? Uh, so, look, our, our advertising is focused purely on, we only basically cap, allow, capture information that user wants us to do. So all of our ads are not invasive, and most clients, when they pay, it's only when someone clicks on it. So, I, okay, I understand in the world of, of the web browser, you get a cookie. How does it work with mobile? Is it the same concept? Do you get a cookie? Is there a text file that contains, you know, where I visited and where I'm going next? and? How long I spent there and all that kind of stuff? Well, talking about the industry as a whole, um, it depends on the phone. So some phones do accept cookies, um, but frankly, for the most of the majority of the phones, which are the phones that aren't as robust as a smartphone, they don't. So what data are you collecting? <laughs> well, we really respect the user's privacy and policy. So, I mean, we value the user more than anyone else. I mean, as an entity, I can't get us. <laughs> Let's see what, okay. Oh, Android. Yes, tell us about Android. That's a good question. Tell us about Android. What kind of stats? Who is this? AKBK Home. Are you here? Come and ask your question, please. What was your question? I do. Um, unfortunately, he limited me to two slides, so you can't see it. <laughs> Can, can you remember them? Just share with us. Yeah, I mean, I think off the top of it, I believe, um, this is, I do sales, I should know this number by my heart, um, but I think in terms of unique Androids in Hong Kong, I think we did a pretty, uh, pretty solid number. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I do remember this, is in terms of overall traffic from the handsets, the number one phone is obviously the iPhone last month in June, but the number two phone was the Nexus One, which is obviously an Android. Now, look, yeah, yeah, you got a Nexus one's nice. 2.2, <laughs> baby. Really, right? Now, um, now here, there's so, a show of hands. Who, 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 sorry to interrupt. Who's got an Android phone? So hard to see stuff. Hold it, hold it. Let's get back to this. Who's got an Android phone? Are you geeks or are you kind of stylish dudes that read, read hip Hong Kong? They're all geeks, right? Stylish dudes. All right, so that's interesting. Um, okay, so I want to know what makes more money? Is it mobile websites? Is it apps? Is it games? Is it SMS? In the mobile advertising kind of landscape, where is the money? Is it, is it still an SMS? Or is it moving across very rapidly to apps and, and games and stuff? Because I get a lot of games and you know, I can see they're always flashing up all kinds of stuff. Or is it you know, mobile websites? 
depends on who you're asking. Are you asking in terms of ad mob, what was the bulk of our revenue? Are you talking about developers or what are you talking about? Well, the industry as a whole. I mean, do you know where is where's the direction of the advertising going? Is it going towards apps? Uh, like, you know, embedded in apps or is it still kind of in the mobile website? Um, it's hard to say, but I think, I mean, I can speak for developers. I think there's three main revenue streams. I mean, the first one is advertising. So advertising um, in terms of having ads on their apps tends to be the bulk of most developers. So if you create an app, the bulk of your advertising or your bulk of your revenue will come from advertising. Um, the second thing is upgradable apps. So what you're trying to do is you have a light version on the iTunes store, you upgrade people to a premium version that doesn't have ads. So that's a good revenue stream. The third and final one is in-game or in-app purchase, which is going to be a big model moving forward. I mean, it's similar to the 10 cent model in um, China, but you have it for applications. So if I'm an ad buyer, can I go to Google Ad Planner and can I buy mobile websites as well or can I only buy laptop access to websites? I don't know actually. I can't. Does anybody in here know that? Is anybody an ad planner? Uh, like you said, planner a lot and I've never seen it. No, mobile. Yeah. So it happens soon, right? So search, the world of search, I, I, I believe you know, search is, is moving very aggressively into the mobile space. Do you see um, location-based advertising taking off? Or is it a lot of froth and very little action? No, I do. I mean, I can't speak for search because AdMob doesn't do search, we do display. But as it pertains to location base, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the fundamental USPs of a mobile phone is the fact that you can uh, get a user's location and hopefully serve them a relevant ad using all the different signals that a handset gives you. So by means, it's not fluffy. I mean, it's going to happen. It's with the condition that um, it's completely opt-in by the consumers. But yeah. I think it's going to be big. Because a bit I don't understand, right? It's Foursquare, for example. Foursquare don't have a sales team in Asia. But you can go as a bar, a restaurant, you can set up to have you know, a, a coupon appear. I don't quite know how you do it, but anyway, it happens. So why doesn't something like AdMob take over the whole you know, uh, location-based uh, business? Um, well, yeah, that's, I don't really know how to answer that. But Foursquare, um, or excuse me, Foursquare, um, is something we'll probably never do because AdMob as a company is focusing on helping companies like Foursquare get distribution for the application. So what Foursquare is doing is something we probably won't do. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. Not really. That's all right. <laughs> what about QR codes? I remember in Hong Kong a few years ago, everybody was frothing at the mouth talking about QR codes. You get your phone, point it at this squiggly thing, and you get this thing that appears on, a website appears on your, on your phone. Or you get an uh, or, uh, augmented reality and a uh, Nike shoe appears on your phone. Is, is that something that you get involved in or is it something you come across? Do your clients say to you, hey, I love banners but I want a QR code? No, not at all. And I think one of the challenges of QR code, and it's going to remain that way until the OEMs change it, is, um, is the fact that it's not a standard feature that comes in every, in every single phone. And the fact that you have to actually download an app to actually scan a QR code is a deterrent to actually not ever taking off in except for Japan, probably. You can use short codes instead. Yes. Short codes instead, okay. So let's talk about a company that's quite large, Apple. How, um, I know that you now have ads on, on the iPad, right? We do. Is that gonna happen like for three months and then Steve Jobs is gonna go, uh-uh, I ads. What's gonna happen there? Is he, is he, is he kick you guys off the iPhone? No, I mean, and look, we're still excited about the iPhone. All of our inventory is actually intact. Um, all of our ad units, our rich media ad units, like the video, the iPad, still work today. Um, and what we think is basically um, what you're probably referencing is they did change the terms and conditions um, to give them the right to exclude certain ad networks, including ours. Um, but we think that you know it's going to probably not. It hasn't got enforced, uh, and we're optimistic that it won't get. Do you think Apple can understand the advertising? I know they bought a company, right? Quadra. Yeah. Do you think they'll make it happen, or is this just going to burn and crash? crash no, and burn? I, think, I think they're going to do a phenomenal job. I mean, some of the stuff that showed for the toys, for example, was great. No, I think they are going to do a great job as well. I mean, and it's always, it always helps the industry when there's more competition, because it brings more recognition that li this is a legitimate uh, vehicle that people need to uh, focus on. Okay, so let's let's go and see if there's uh, any... any there's Five things have happened on Twitter. I hope they're not insults. Let's see. Why did Google buy AdMob? 
Can you answer that question? I can't answer it. I, I don't know. I mean, I... Because you know, they had the know. money. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, uh, they bought AdMob because the text ads were not succeeding on... Uh, that was one of the rumors on the internet, right? AdSense wasn't taking off. Uh, yeah, how long until AdMob just gets rolled into AdSense Mobile? No comment on that. No comment. <laughs> Sorry. Here's a good one. How do you keep people using your platform if your competitors offer a higher commission to the developers? I only sell the ads, so I can't comment on that. So, I'm not trying to back it. So, the way, just to give you some color, the way our team is structured is, um, I actually go out and get people to actually advertise on that mall. So brands like Visa, as an example, um, Audi, whoever it is. And then we have a whole other team that's focused on um, developers and revenue share and stuff. So, I can't answer that. I don't do that. That's an interesting question though. So if you're, if you're a developer, is there a platform you go to and you, you, you apply to be on the ad, the, the ad network, the AdMob network? There is. It's a self-service system that you add in some code and then you start running ads. So what is the difference? Who's a developer who uses AdMob? What's the difference? Anybody know? Who asked that question? K Kit Tech. Where's Kit Tech? Not here. All right, cool. Kit Tech, tell us, what's the difference? I'm... Well, you said you get more commission on other networks. What's the difference? You don't know? Ask the question. All right, other question. How do you keep people using your platform if your competitor offers a higher commission? The question is, what is the difference in commission that, that you get as a developer? You don't know. Okay, cool. No problem. All right, so this is time to take some, pick some questions from the floor. So, you're doing well, man. You're doing well. They're a rough lot. Okay. Who's got a question? Casey. Um, so, Apple releases iAds. Actually, there it is. It shows up on the Twitter feed. Yeah. Oh, I, I was, I'm an Apple, I'm an iPhone developer. I did. Um, and I also had AdMob, but now I've switched to iAds because the split is better. I get much more uh, interactive ads. The ads don't jump out of my app. How is uh, AdMob going to compete with that? How will you win us developers back? Well, the answer to this is we'll, we will compete with that, um, with iAds. And I think um, the only thing I'll say is I think one of the great points with uh, AdMob is we are platform agnostic. So when you run ads with us, not only does it run on Apple platform, but it also runs on Android, Blackberry, Symbian, whatever it is. Um, and I think that's a big point of differentiation for us. All right. How about the uh, how about the ads popping popping out of the app? They don't. We're running ads right now that don't pop out. I mean, it's it's actually that's an interesting point you bring up. Is it's actually up to the developer to implement their code where they have an in browser within the app. So we're running campaigns right now. When you click on the ad, what happens in the app? The browser pops up in the app, and you can do whatever you want to do. Watch a video. Enter your data collection. You can close it, and you're still now. Who's developing those ads? Are you getting? Are you? Do you have an agency to do that? Are you working with agencies to do that, or how does that work? Well, we work with multiple partners. I mean, we don't focus on creative development at all. So it could be a big entity such as Neil Ogilvy, or it could be a small shop like I don't know. Um, I don't know who's small and who's small. Honestly, but it's we don't do that. We don't do creative. And how, and how is that working out? How's that working out for you? <laughs> don't talk to him later. Talk to him later. Another question? Any other questions? Can I see any hands if you have a question? Uh, Alright, your, your name and your question. Just got on Twitter. Um, I just want to know, how do your clients actually measure the commercial impact of their mobile advertising investment? Well, it's simple. It's Think of mobile as a vehicle that's similar to any other of your vehicles. So, here's an example. We ran a campaign uh, for Land Rover in Australia, and what they did was they did our pre-roll video ad unit, and how they measured the success or the KPI of that was simply how long did people engage with this pre-roll video ad unit. So as an example, um, the ad was how it works is you go into an application before the application starts, the video plays, and the video is 30 seconds. So on average, what we saw during the two-week campaign was people spent 40 seconds in that. So they spent 30 seconds watching the TVC, 
and then a 10%, 10 second incremental amount. So that was our KPI. There's other KPI where we did a campaign for Kaplan. I don't know if anyone knows Kaplan. It's an educational institute in Singapore. And their KPI was referrals. That's all they cared for. I mean, they needed people to sign up for high um, education programs, which are about 15,000 US. And they measured us on, can we bring them that much, much conversion, just like any of the other online vehicles. So the bottom line is, mobile does not, it should not have a different KPI than what you're already doing. What about the whole, what mobile offers that, that websites don't offer is the click to call. What about that whole concept of click to call? Is, is that kicking off where you see an ad and you go, yeah, I want to call them. Is that, because I, I know uh, AIA did campaigns before you guys were around in, in India where they had, you know, click to call ads and it was highly successful because you, you called through a call center and, you know, a lovely person said, you know, do you want to buy life insurance? So is the click to call a, a big area? It is, it is. And the reason click to call is a big area is twofold. One is if you're doing click to call, especially on the smartphones like iPhone and um, on Android, is you don't need a mobile web page. So that removes a lot of the friction right there when you click on an ad unit and a phone number pops up and then you can make a phone call straight to the call center. Uh, the second thing is it lessens the conversion window, right? So you don't need to click on an ad unit, go to a mobile page, and then click on a phone number. So anytime you can shorten that conversion cycle, you're always going to get better conversions, providing the qualified leads. I would have thought that's the best ROI though. I mean, you know, you call a number and there you go, you've got a lead, right? It is. It is. Uh, well, it depends on the campaign. I mean, you got to make sure your creative is relatively crisp in nature, so you don't get random calls, someone just clicking in and saying, you know, what was your ad talking about and stuff like that. But it is. It is pretty effective. Okay, there was a, there was a, there you go, your name? Wicked Top. Hi, I'm Jennifer with Rackspace. Um, I just uh, saw some, um, uh, uh, I mean, well, whenever I get lost, like just now, like looking for full R, I, um, you know, used my smartphone and, um, you know, looked for location and everything. And uh, in terms of the, uh, there's, I think there's a visual search happening, um, developing, I guess, at Google. And I was wondering if you guys are going to be integrating that. Um, combined with like the location and if that's going to be sort of a, a development for uh, Admiral. What, what is visual search? Can you search with your eyes closed? Well, there's voice mean, search, like, right? There's voice search. Sorry, I don't mean to be cheeky. What is visual search? I mean like uh, what I saw is that they were still, maybe they're several steps ahead, but what I saw was that they were taking a picture of a, a, a place or, you know, just a scenery and then it would like sync up with, uh, I guess, the image library, and then they would basically tell you where the location was, where this was, how to get there, things like that. So I was wondering if uh, that is a, an upcoming development for people who are lost, like me. <laughs> That's a bloody good idea. Does it work? Are you, are you probably a bit too advanced for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really have anything to comment on that. I think it's a damn good idea, especially when there's linguistic issues. Uh, another question. There was a question at the back. Sorry, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You can come towards me, you know, I don't have to call the way to... Uh, g'day. So, you woke up one day with a great idea for a new company. How did you go about getting funding to start AdMob back when it was a great idea? I have to warn you, he's not the founder. I wish I was the founder. If he was the founder, yeah. he would be wearing gold jewellery. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd have a better haircut. Yeah, I was... <laughs> and, and a boyzillion. Uh, well, so I mean, how did your founder go about it? You know, I was employee number 121, so I really can't help you now. I go to TechCrunch. I can tell you a little bit about the founder. I actually researched it. Um, here we go. It was founded by a gentleman called Omar al -Hamwi. He's 30 years old, correct? 32 now, yes. All right, he was 30. Wasn't he? A Syrian man who set up... Um, a company called Photo Chatter to exchange photos by mobile. Uh, he had problems with that, so then he went into AdMob. Um, let me see, what happened? Blah, blah, blah. That's it, really. That's all it has to say. So he started doing photos. So he was very visual, and then he decided, no money in this, I'm going to do ads. <laughs> One more question. One more question. No more questions? Phil, no question? Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much to our speaker. We're going to do a little prize draw. So, uh, Viv, name cards. My lovely assistant, Vivian, at the door. Name cards, we're going to do a little prize draw. 
Actually, let's see if there's one. Whilst we're waiting, is there another question on Twitter? People are very shy. What is the average click-through rate with your ads? Well, it depends on countries and markets, but in general, click-through rate is about 1%. Um, but there's obviously a whole bunch of variables with that. So what we generally say is the easiest rule um, is on mobile, click-through rates will be between 5 and 10 times higher than what you get on PC. Do you see that falling? Because like the web, I mean, click-through rates started very high, and they very, very quickly fell to like, you know, 0.1% or whatever. So is that, is that going to happen with mobile? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the nature of the thing is, as it evolves, it will slowly decline. Now, how fast it will decline, the rate of decline is probably not going to be as um, dramatic as PC. Uh, but yeah, it will probably will decline. So tell us a little bit of future gazing. Where, where is mobile? Now you're doing iPads, right? Does that mean you're going to get into mobile TV? Like a new, some new kind of tablet? Where do, you, where do you see the future of mobile advertising going? Well, I, I can't speak for the company I work for, how we see it, but I think from, from my point of view is whoever brought up the whole location aspect of it, I think that's going to be a key and crucial aspect of a mobile phone. Uh, but I think the second thing is, um, as it pertains to mobile phone, like you said, is the most personal device you can possibly have, right? So um, I think mobile phones will evolve to be you know, effectively kind of a social network on, a roaming social network, um, as something that's going to happen. Okay, so we're getting local. So, all right, uh, a big round of applause for our, our guest speaker. Good effort. Good job. Now you can relax. Uh, Christian's offering a special discount of 10% off advertising if you buy it tonight. <laughs> I made that up, right? So, uh, let's do a quick prize draw. Where's the name cards? Can I? Viv? Name cards? Or we can just throw these into the, into the audience. Can somebody do me a favor and go and get the name cards from the, the door? Ah, there you go. Okay. All right, here we go. Do you want to come and do the lucky draw? Come in. We'll do uh, the, the second and the, and the third and the second, and then if Danny, is Danny still here? Danny, are you still here? You can do the first, okay? So, a uh, free meal at Yoshinoa. You, you can do the uh, prize number one. He can do two and three. Do you have a dick? Yeah, it's a good dick. Free meal at Yoshinoya. Yeah, two two slices of sashimi. This is is this Trap Lewis from Yahoo? Who used to be from Yahoo? Is it the one in the same Trap Lewis? That is you, Trap. How are you doing? You are the winner of Yoshinoya, buddy. Ah, oh, come and get your noodles. Hi, 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 cookie tickers, hey. Brilliant. The Trav, he exists. Napoleon, I never got to put my card in. No oh, put it in now, put it in now. You're not going to win now. Mix, mix, mix. No, no, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. There you go, a little, little photo op. Oh, oh, what? There you go. Photo, mate, mate, photo. What's up, Ross? See you. Alright, Yoshinoya. Yoshinoya. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. Cheers. All right. All right. So we're going for um, prize number two. Are you giving away any boys in here? No. All right. Cool. Worth $150. It's uh, two tickets for AMC Cinemas. Uh, no restriction. I don't know if that means adult or no restriction, like no cinema. Um, $150. You can go and see uh, Salt. Exception. Huh? Exception. Exception. He's really, he's really big on Inception. Inception. Sorry. Go on. Dig, 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 man. Dig, dig, dig. The winner is. Daniel Yoon Cheng. Woo! Daniel Yoon Cheng from Panadol. That's what you need. Panda form is uh, an alternative to Google uh, forms. Local startup Panda form. They do like woofoo, right? Yeah. There you go, man. There you go. Panda woofoo. Little photo that way, that way. Shake your hands, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the big prize. You can come and do the big prize, man. As he's a sponsor. Have a good dig.
Preferably don't get somebody who's bald, because it's a haircut. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you can have a boy zillion at Tony and Guys. Sam Man. Sam Man. Sam Man. From? From Creative Technology. Sam Man from Creative Technologies. Are you here? There you go. He's got hair. Good one. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> All right, guys, so thank you very much. You can hang out here hey. until, um, yeah, that's it. I what else do you want? I, th I thought they were the star surprises before you thought it something really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> you sponsor it and I'll give it to you. All right, guys, thank you for that. Um, we, we've got to get out of here at um, 9.30 because there's a party, there's a college party here at 10. So if you want to hang out with college uh, boys or girls, so uh, please hang out here till 9.30, and the next Web Wednesday will be on the 11th of August. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris.